Thank you for watching CBS 8 Plus and welcome to this throwback special. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. CBS 8 has covered San Diego for more than seven decades, marking so many memories along the way. In this throwback special, we jump into our CBS 8 archives for a closer look at Coronado Island. It's known as the Crown City and is the crown jewel of San Diego Bay. It's home to the iconic Hotel Del Coronado, NAS North Island, spectacular neighborhoods, and a thriving tourist industry. Like the rest of San Diego, it's changed a lot over the years. And back in 1986, some were asking if the good old days were gone, if Coronado had changed too much. Marty Levine took a deep dive, seeing the struggle between those holding on to the past and others pushing progress. Are the good old days gone in Coronado? It all depends on your point of view. Yes, it's, it's changed. In certain respects, I think it's improved. And others, I wish we had our old sleepy Coronado. I'm very protective of, of Coronado, and I'm very proud of my native, my native city. And uh, what, we've, what we're trying to do, of course, is to uh, preserve the character of our community and the lifestyle and the quality of life that we're so famous for. The name of the game in Coronado is tourism. That's our only industry. And it centers around our fabulous Hotel Del Coronado, which is internationally known. It's Coronado's own reputation for quality of life and environment that has kept it teetering on the endangered species list. If it was the ferry service with the Hotel Del and the lot sales in the 1880s that put Coronado on the map, it was the bridge and high-rise condominiums 80 years later that marked the beginning of a new era when longtime residents like retiree William Stevens formed a common opinion of the high-rise newcomers. They're not really residents of Coronado in many respects, uh, although I have classmates over there retired who, who are residents and have been for years, but there's a great number of them that they're really uh, of a transient nature. I do everything I can to, to preserve it and protect it by actually going to City Hall and and uh, the Planning Commission and keeping track of the agenda and seeing what's what's going on so that changes won't be too drastic and we will keep our quality of life. I think that's important um, before it's too late. As energetic and young at heart as the day she was born on Coronado, Bonnie McKenzie works with other residents to preserve her city's heritage. When we failed in saving the ferry boat is what led to the impetus to save the rest of Coronado. We felt that we have a lot of history here and we must preserve it. Preserving history is not easy. Grand old mansions, though they lend Coronado much of its charm, may continue to fall. Victims of rising land values. Ideas of turning them into bed and breakfast inns may be their last hope. They're not making any more land, and therefore people are going to bid up to live here. And it's just that simple. Huh? Retired Navy captain and businessman Dick Parker and his family have owned land on Coronado for 50 years, or since lots were about $1,500 each. As a businessman, resident, and former city councilman in Coronado, he reflects an attitude more accommodating to the pressures of growth. I've always been for uh, sort of a planned progress, because I know it has to come. Uh, people are coming here, and I don't think we can uh, shut them out. What will probably shut people out of Coronado is the lack of space. There's almost no more residential land to develop, except for a section near the Coronado Cays and these condominiums overlooking San Diego Bay. At almost a quarter of a million dollars and up, Condos at the landing represent not only the high cost of land on Coronado, but the influence of a protective community on new development. There was a great apprehension on behalf of the community to recreating any high-rise type structures in an area that is very low profile and fairly low density. As head of Watt Industries in San Diego, Joe Davis says the design of the landing was heavily influenced by the community, ranging from the Hotel Dell-like facade 
to the public park and view corridor at the end of the city's main thoroughfare. It was our objective to maximize the recognition of views both for the public and for the private aspects of the project. And uh, the, the design was specifically intended to address those issues. Most of the remaining open land on Coronado will be used for hotel construction. Like this 450-room project, it is underway next to the Kays housing area, and the 300-room hotel with 11-acre park to be built at the foot of the Coronado Bridge. Both hotels will add significantly to the city's much-needed tourist revenues. The taxes generated by tourism uh, are better than 50% of our, our total general fund here, and that's that's quite a chunk of money. From her office as head of the Coronado Chamber of Commerce, Mary Kay Forsyth works to cultivate the city's tourist economy, something she says Coronado couldn't live without. Should we lose that, that edge or that, that source of uh, funding, I don't think that this city could survive as a, a separate city from San Diego. So it all boils down to trying to balance the pressure to accommodate today's needs with yesterday's heritage a heritage that is largely part of Coronado's attraction. A year later, Connie Healy crossed the bridge as part of her Celebrating San Diego series. She found locals who completely embraced the small town vibe unique to the island. She also discovered a community looking to the past to move forward with renovated classic homes and a ferry brought back to life to boost tourism. Despite what some of the kids brought up on the island thought, it sure didn't feel like Boronado. It is more than likely the most picturesque and gracious location in San Diego, the home to celebrities and military leaders and host to kings and presidents, the tiny island of Coronado. They've made movies here more than once, entertained world leaders and built a reputation that has made Coronado one of the most notable destinations on the West Coast. But for the people who live here, it's a quaint little town, just within sight of the hustle and bustle of the big city. It has a charm that, that you just can't find anyplace else. Oh, I like the small town atmosphere, and I love the weather, I love the views. It's just a nice place to live. If the island ever lost any of its charm, it might be when the bridge was built, connecting the little town directly with the freeway and putting the ferry out of business. That, fortunately, was temporary, with the ferry just recently restored to service. For once, something that was lost wasn't forgotten, and the landing going up at the dock could mean another boom for Coronado. Small town charm is lost on some of the residents. As is often the case, living in a small town isn't always all it's cracked up to be. Sometimes it gets a little boring. Why? Just because there's not a lot to do. for kids to do. In fact, among the kids, the island has developed a nickname. Boronado. <laughs> Don't tell the tourists that. Gracious, unique, unusual are more often the terms visitors affixed to Coronado. It's where the very old and the very new come together. In many cases here, the very old has been preserved. Like Anderson's Bakery, it's been on the island for three generations. Here, customers not only serve their own coffee, they have their own mug. Pretty homey, another word that often pops up. The Navy calls it home. Many others would like to, but true natives are few and far between. They're called islanders and they're pretty proud of their history. Towns have been known to grow up around harbors, railroads, military installations, and schools, but this is the town that grew up around a hotel, 
Opened in 1888, the Hotel Del Coronado was at the time the largest resort hotel in the world, with electrical installations supervised by Thomas Edison and a final price tag of over $1 million. The hotel was a marvel of its time, and it still is today. It's a community of sharp contrasts, an isle that sports aircraft carriers on one side and sailboats on the other, and boasts of having it all. We call it the Isle of the Pacific. And if they don't understand that, we say, how about East Hawaii? <laughs> you know? We have a bumper sticker that says, Coronado has it all. And you had better believe it. It is one of the few real neighborhoods visitors to San Diego pass through. So in a way, Coronado represents us all. Many tourists have left us taking with them memories of Coronado. Could we possibly make a better impression? It's just a total garden spot. There's nothing you could want that isn't here. To get to Coronado Island, you used to have to take the ferry or drive the long way up the strand. There was no quick, easy way to get there. That all changed in 1969 with the Coronado San Diego Bridge. The bridge was a massive accomplishment and the opening a huge celebration attended by then Governor Ronald Reagan. In 2009, our Adrian Moore would be there for the 40th anniversary, taking a look at all the changes the bridge had already seen. The Coronado Bridge took more than two years and $47.6 million to build. It opened in 1969, the 200th anniversary of San Diego's founding. Vintage cars took the first trip across the two mile span. Many headed to a dedication attended by then governor Ronald Reagan, who seemed inspired by the achievement. There is so little wrong in this blessed land of ours compared to all that is right. And it's so easy to think of this in this beautiful day and on an occasion such as this. But may I just simply say, let's all try to use this occasion as encouragement that we can build what has to be built. We can rebuild that which needs rebuilding. We can do with our great capacity everything that needs to be done to right all that is wrong in this land of ours. Do any search on San Diego and chances are this distinctive blue bridge will be one of the first images to pop up on the screen, the Coronado Bridge. Happy birthday, Coronado Bridge. Now celebrating its 40th year, its sleek and slender towers and smooth curve are as beautiful as ever and its function equally important. It helps get people to and from their jobs, which is very important to the to the economy of this area and the state. It has also served as an important cultural part of the community by giving birth to Chicano Park in Barrio Logan. We still celebrate that very much in Barrio Logan, how we were able to uh, take that land and turn it into a park that's been so good at serving the community. But the two mile bridge marked the end of an era in 1969 when ferries were the only transportation between San Diego and Coronado. When it opened, then Governor Compared Ronald Reagan was one of the first to drive across it. It has become the, the symbol of, of our community in many respects. Principal architect Robert Mosher remembers fighting pins. over the color Stick of the bridge. Pins. Initial plans didn't call for blue, but red instead. And I said, you know, that's the wrong thing to do because you put a red flag in front of a bull and you get in trouble. Well, what do you want to paint it? I said, I want to paint it blue. I want it to be between the sky and the bay. It took more than two years and $47.6 million to build and underwent $95 million in seismic retrofitting in 1997. A $1.10 toll was removed in 2002, giving those 75,000 people who make the drive across this iconic structure every day both a free ride and a fabulous view. What a spectacular view. Sometimes a bridge is more than just a bridge. 
The Hotel Del Coronado, the red roofed icon, turns 135 years old in 2023. But in many ways, it's frozen in time. The Dell, as it's known to many, became a national historic landmark in 1977. Reporter Barney Morris, along with photographer Ben Cutshaw, marked the moment by soaking in the hotel's beauty. On its 95th birthday in 1983, Carlos Amezcua visited for the celebration of the island getaway that has hosted everything from royalty, presidents and celebrities, to local families enjoying a little staycation. And in 1988, they celebrated a century with Hollywood legends and the Lollipop Guild. Now the Del Coronado is being designated as a National Historic Landmark. Congressman Lionel Van Dierlen says that Interior Secretary Cecil Andrus formally approved adding the hotel to the list of the nation's most historic places. And so on this Memorial Day, I took a stroll through the hotel, and you can go along through the eyes of cameraman Ben Cutchell. She is magnificent. Six years after she opened in 1894, Thomas Alva Edison personally supervised installation of the lighting system. It then remained for some years the largest single electrified building outside of New York City. The guests of the hotel to this day include royalty and celebrities from every walk of life. Presidents who have stayed at the Del Coronado include Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Lyndon B. Johnson, and Richard Nixon. John Philip Sousa directed concerts at the pavilion of the Del Coronado, and even now plans are underway to build a $15 million expansion that will add 300 rooms to the present 600 in the hotel and the annex known as the Ocean Towers. The Hotel Del Coronado, grand, glorious, plush, and comfortable. A throwback to the grandeur of another time, but still very much a part of the lifestyle here in San Diego. And she's only 90 years old. Hot air balloons were the only way to get around by air in the late 1800s, and that's when the stately Hotel Del Coronado was built. It was the dream of Elisha Babcock and H.L. Story, both of Chicago, to build an oceanfront resort that would be the talk of the Western world. Well, they accomplished that feat, building the hotel in only a year's time. Today, 95 years later, it is still the talk of the world. It has a special ambiance. I have probably wandered around in this hotel for almost 20 years, and every time I come in that lobby, the feeling is still there. It, it talks to you, and, and the history uh, is, is so significant that there is a special ambiance. And ambiance is what this hotel is all about. Movies have been made here. Kings and Queens have stayed here. And the rich and powerful have always been attracted to this Victorian castle. I think one of the reasons so many celebrities come here is because they know that they are going to have privacy. The 95th birthday party came complete with a mini tent city and costumes. But regardless of how much the world around the Dell changes, its bright red towers remain timeless. Carlos Amesco, News 8, Coronado. By the light of a slivery moon, the castle on the sand came to life. <laughs> birthday party for a grand old bell named Dell, in whose rooms and halls movies and memories were and will be made. I've never been here before, that's why this is really something. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be any place. I'm wonderful. I'm happy to be here. Just came in from Hawaii. No, it's not so bad. You don't go from Hawaii to San Diego. I served in the Navy in San Diego. I was here during the war. Uh, I was stationed at the uh, Navy base. Some like it hot, some like it historical. This was a walk back through the 20th century. All this to see what it felt like 100 years ago. And 100 years ago, they advertised for hotel guests, telling them they had no thunder, no lightning, no mad dogs, no cyclones, and all that for $3 a day. Famous faces from Dallas to Oz. These are the original munchkins. Well, 
It was some enchanted evening. Carol Hassan, News 8, Coronado. Fidel, a star that brought out the stars to visit for fun, but also for work. Okay, just when you thought you'd seen every image of Marilyn Monroe, our archives produced decades old footage of the movie star. The Zevely Zone took a visit to the Hotel Del Coronado, where Marilyn starred in one of the greatest comedies of all time, Some Like It Hot. It was in September of 1958 when these red top towers were upstaged by the beauty of Marilyn Monroe. San Diegans were mesmerized by a star who stood right here. We've rediscovered several minutes of never before seen silent outtakes of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, Marilyn was really at the height of her fame. This footage was shot at Hotel Del Coronado, where Gina Patron is the heritage manager. Can you believe we've never aired this? This is incredible, incredible footage. Have you seen any of this before? No. No, absolutely no. If there's one thing I admire, it's a girl with a shapely ankle. <laughs> Me too. Bye-bye. The outtakes were shot on the set of Some Like It Hot, which starred Marilyn, Tony Curtis, and Jack Lemmon. I have never read a comedy script. Not only better, maybe not its equal. The outtakes of Marilyn were first discovered decades ago. 1958. By News 8 photographer Ben Cutchell hidden away in an archive canister, simply labeled outs. There's maybe two and a half minutes of Marilyn, Jack Lemon, Tony Curtis on the beach at the Hotel Del, and I thought, wow. About 30 seconds of that footage aired in a Larry Himmel story. There she is, looks like in between takes. But these images have never been seen before. We spotted another star in those outtakes. Jamie Lee Curtis was also on the beach that day, sort of. Tony Curtis was married to Janet Lee, who you may remember from the movie Psycho. Janet Lee was pregnant. She was pregnant with Jamie Lee Curtis at the time of filming. And she wasn't alone. Marilyn was also pregnant during the shooting of Some Like It Hot. I'm a hot sorry. You're not hurt, are you? Which could have contributed to her showing up on set three and four hours late, according to the director, Billy Wilder. So you just say, my God, my God, would, uh, this was a question as to who is going to have a nervous breakdown, me, the two guys who were suffering, or, or the, the, the money man. But Wilder had to admit, Marilyn was worth the wait. I want to be kissed by you. In 2009, while celebrating the film's 50th anniversary, I interviewed Tony Curtis. It was fun, you know. It was fun. We could have had three weeks in Florida, all expenses paid. He laughed about the movie's plot after he and Lemon witnessed a mob shooting and dressed up as women to escape. What's the matter now? How do they walk in these things? Walking in high heels was a first for Curtis. Let's do another log in the fire. But kissing Marilyn Monroe is what he remembered most. Curtis told me Marilyn devoured him. She was a very beautiful woman. Very beautiful. The lost footage also shows Marilyn with her husband at the time, playwright Arthur Miller. Both unaware, Marilyn would suffer a miscarriage two months later. And just when you think you've seen it all and you've learned everything there is, it's wonderful to discover something like this that really brings it to life. What a chapter in San Diego history. Absolutely. Eleven presidents have stayed at the Dell, but no one made San Diego's crown jewel shine like the magic of Maryland. That's fantastic. Absolutely wonderful footage. In the Zevely Zone. It's priceless. Jeff Zevely, News 8. Uh, by the way, the footage may have been lost to Jeff, but it was safely in our vast archives, just waiting for our archive editor, Barb Nielsen, to bring it back to light. More than half of Coronado Island is a naval air station, and all of the island is filled with military and patriotic pride. That's a recipe for big celebrations on the 4th of July. From cookouts to fireworks, the island has it all. The main event rolls down Orange Avenue with bands, beauty queens, and much more. Here's a look back at the Coronado 4th of July parade over the decades.
Kids' Day celebration was suitably all-American. Just about every possible organization had somebody entered doing something. For more than two hours, Orange Avenue was more than just the main drag in one town. 177 entries strutted their stuff for more than 15,000 people crowded beach chair to beer can along the route. And while some people just like parades in general, others came to see their favorites pass by. Um, I like the floats. What about them? And the flowers are crazy. The clowns, because they they give stuff to people, and they go around and they tell jokes and make you laugh. Gee, I'll have to look at the program to find out what the favorite part is. No, I, I like to see the military end of it. They have, a, they have quite a few of them on the in there this year. Now, there are some sophisticates in every crowd who think that parades are boring, that one parade is just like the next one. Well, that's not true. I cover an awful lot of parades, and everyone is different, and everyone is fun. Kathy Clark, News 8, in the middle of the Coronado Parade on a July 4th. The Coronado Fourth of July Parade is as American as apple pie. It's the American way. As American as Uncle Sam. Boy, oh boy, good morning. Hey, wouldn't be a parade if you guys didn't all show up. But to get a good spot, a lot of people camped out. We drove down to get an ice cream about 10 o'clock last night, and people were camped out all the way along the, the middle divider here. Pretty amazing. Oh, it was really quite roughing it, I'll tell you. But uh, we got to experience the wildlife of Coronado, I guess. They camped out or got here before the sun came up. It's tradition. I, we could not do the 4th of July without getting up at 5.30 in the morning, coming down to make sure you have a ringside seat. Say happy 4th of July. <laughs> It wouldn't be the 4th of July without the Coronado Parade. This is a great hometown, hometown parade. And people got what they came for today. Chris Saunders, News 8, Coronado. celebrating our Independence Day, which is very special today of all days. And family tradition. It's a family it's tradition. A family tradition, because we're from Coronado. Even though we all live other places now, we always come back for the fourth. coming for 20 years and it, uh, it represents everything that America's about, freedom. A few years back, they added a 7.4 mile run in the morning that you could do before you checked out the parade. Thank you so much for watching this throwback special. To see more throwbacks like this one on CBS 8 Plus, click on the news tab at the top of the screen. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We'll see you next time.